All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. I got another watch list for you. It's going to be a little bit more informal. I thought you guys needed to see me. It's been a while, and I think you need some like hyper editing because today was crazy. I think you need to know about NVIDIA and then what happened with Boeing after hours and then what made it drop and then the hot data, then the not hot data, then the PCE and what's going to happen, you know, get you some dopamine reacting and... I wanted to show you my pretty cool One Punch Man shirt. I thought you would appreciate it as much. I even put on a video prop today. Uh, I saw an article that said Rolex prices went down, so I figured I could I could try it on now eventually. You know, it's time. It's time, maybe. Not really. Uncle would be so disappointed, but I want to talk about this theory of why I think the stock market is going to go up next week, so... It's kind of reverse psychology because even if it doesn't go up and you make fun of me in the comments uh, by next week, I'm going to make my money back on that NQ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, in all honesty, though, I think I have a good reason for it. And today was absolutely wild. I don't know if you guys were there. You could go watch the stream for the recap. You know we do it seven hours, baby, but... We gapped up. It was a pretty wild day off of NVIDIA. Everybody was very, very hyped off of it. And even off of the open, the defensive stocks were kind of leading in the way. So that's what made it a little bit more interesting. But right at the opening bell, we like went up for like two minutes and then started to sell off. You broke every level. You were barely above like 4017 on the SPX out here. But then you dropped. You went from up 1% on the NASDAQ to negative like half a percent only to finish the day closing 75. So there's a lot of reasons. I have the keys. I'm going to run through it there, but let me give this to you simple. Tomorrow, PCE is going to be important. That's this pretty picture right here. This is showing it. We're going to talk about it a little bit more, but what I'm saying is that after this week, you know, right now, if we close red tomorrow on the week, that will be the third red week of the year. So three out of eight weeks will have been red. And the difference is these last three red weeks, they've all been in a row if we close red. But now what I want you to understand, we've talked about the bonds kind of lagging or leading the way. And you could kind of see that here on the daily. Remember, we said compare it here to the spy. I'm turning my head, so I don't know how the audio sounds. But it's kind of looking like the market's right here, and you're still about 9, 10 days ahead, right? But here's the thing. Next week, it's going to be the beginning of the month, and that in and of itself is going to lead to both end of the month rebalancing and then everybody getting excited for the new month. But now the data it's nothing. Uh, I, I think that's extreme to say nothing, but what I'm saying is that it's not as important or it will be easy data that can brush that people can brush off really, really easily. So what I'm expecting here is maybe next week it chills out. If it doesn't chill out, those Fed futures go crazy off the data. Anything else happens, well, then there you go. You know, we can't predict that. But the way I'm looking at it, assuming nothing changes from here, assuming we get all the data and obviously tomorrow's PCE in the morning, 530, that will have a big effect. But that data shouldn't move us much. And I think it's going to distract people a little bit. And then people will be able to kind of calm down, get a little bit of relief. And then the week after that, you get the non-farm payroll. So hopefully you see where I'm coming from on that. I hope it helps you a little bit. And now that I've gotten, you know, the visuals out the way, bro, I'm white as hell, man. This winter, I have not gone outside. But I, I got to see you, man. It's good to see you. I hope. Let me know. Do you need pretty pics? Do you need like, I don't even know what I'm showing you right now. But anyways, run it, baby. But right off the bat, let's talk a little bit more about what happened today. I'm telling you, it was really crazy. We closed at 39.91. You gapped up to 40.20, and this is that line there, that 40.17 I was talking about. You've seen this all week, but the minute we broke below 40.17. I mean, you weren't able to get above it up until today. And even off of this little rally here, you still close below that. So we've had this line drawn out here for a while. I forgot which close that it's based off of, but I'm sure if you go and bring it throughout time, you'll see like 4017. This was an era where you've actually had a lot of different positioning, breaks, lows, supports. And this is over the last year. I mean, this right here is only 180 days, but that's how it started. And now the question I kept getting asked today is, why did this happen? Why did what what happened? Why are we down? Why are we up? 
and it was very hard to explain. I was very, you know, surprised in the morning to see it do what it did, but there was a lot of reasons you could have given for the up and down, but the cause was very elusive minute by minute. So I hope this could give you some background, and this will even help you understand a little bit about today, but there was bad earnings from consumer stocks. I believe it was Dollar General. They reported lower guidance. eBay, they also said they're going to have a difficult year in 2023, and then ultimately... The big bad dominoes, man, they dropped like 13%, and they also said that they're lowering their multi-year guidance as there is a lot of uncertainty. So not only did you get that, you also had a hot PCE number, and the quarter over quarter came out today. Tomorrow will be the month over month and year over year, but even the quarter over quarter, that came in hot, and that leads to the assumption that tomorrow's month over month and year over year, that is also going to be high. But these were your reasons for the downside, but then on the upside, uh, you know, zero day options kept getting talked about, but believe it or not, there was constant call buying on the zero day options all day. And then NVIDIA, that was a big reason for the upside that lifted up all of the tech stocks. I think almost 2% in the morning. I mean, 15% on one of the biggest chip stocks in the world, the biggest chip stock that was very, very big for them. So that really helped things out. And it also led to a lot of positivity in the morning. But like I'm saying, if you're trying to understand and, you know, why was it that we gapped up with the NVIDIA, then we sold off? You already had the data sets, the Kansas City Fed, it didn't move much, but it was really hard to explain why we dumped even another 10, 20 points below yesterday's low and got towards another level. I mean, we didn't even hit 3970 yesterday or 3974, that's another level, and then even 3960 were right there, but none of that happened on any of the other days, and this one just kind of started picking up, and then vice versa on the upside, the Fed futures did did go up and they did hit I think 29% and they still remain pretty elevated by the end of the day but there was reasons why and I was even expecting a burn one today and looking at it now that's kind of what happened it just was very intense you know minute by minute hour by hour so that is your first key. The second key, like I'm telling you here, PCE is going to be a big event tomorrow just in terms of being inflation related but here's that chart again moves on the PCE days are actually mostly positive on average. An average return for a PCE release on the futures, it's a positive gain of about a quarter of a percent. The average negative response is still positive 0.05. So there was only one event in the last, I believe, uh, six months, and that was actually last January, where we ended up negative, and it was only negative by a fifth or 0 0.05, a fifth of a percent there, which isn't that much. So that's why I'm saying tomorrow is definitely going to be interesting. And then depending on how that plays out, maybe we have an opportunity to cool out and then people kind of react a little less jumpy to the data next week. And then everybody gets prepared for the non-farms. But that leads to the final key, man. This is what I already told you in the beginning. I think the aggressive downside is done for now. Wait until the non-farm and then we'll be good to go because after the non-farms, you're going to get one more CPI after that. Then it's Jerome Powell time, baby. But let us get into the plays. So right off the bat, I got three different plays. I made a couple of plays today. We'll go over those after that. But Boeing, I brought this up earlier this week. It kept flirting with that $200 level. But now after hours, there was news of them halting the delivery of the 787 Dreamliner. Dreamliner. But this one isn't the 777 Max or whatever. It's a different one. But this is just a new development for Boeing. It brought the spot stock down to that 200 support level. And I want to see if this is going to be a big enough push. So I'm still holding that short for like over a month or two now. Hasn't gone too crazy. At some points it was, but still at a very manageable price right now. But I want to see if that goes through, we start to break 200. This could be interesting for both the Dow and just Boeing in general, as it has been a leader from October all the way till now. So that was big news. We'll see how that plays out. That is play number one. And then play number two, Zim. This is another play that I'm already in and it could have died already. I mean, it was down like right away right when we bought it they got a downgrade but it didn't it came back and I like this because the initial reasoning why we bought it shipping prices going up staying up the price to ship everything from natural gas to other tankers they have been going up especially as you hear more of that China reopening all those reasons are sticking and even then I think natural gas is starting to run a little bit harder here so I 
I'm liking the reasoning. The difficulty here is that Zim is hard to move. We are now positive on it, so I'm really looking for one of the breakout days, hoping we could flip out of it, but I am liking it so far. I did get up to break even, usually on some of these plays where I was down on it immediately. I get back up to a little profit. I'll take it. I already did that here. I thought it might be one worth pushing because, like I'm saying, those reasons and that shipping prices skyrocketing across the globe, that is still sticking with it. So I think that's going to be an interesting one. That is play number two and then five. Finally, play number three, baby, booking. They had great earnings. I mean, it was like crazy year-over-year -year comp comps because they even did good last year, but the stock just had a very minimal reaction. So depending on the opening, depending on if the analysts stick with it, I think this one could be a big one, kind of like Airbnb post earnings. Now, this one's an expensive stock, but don't be surprised what you could do with like one or two shares, even five shares. That's what I traded last time. And we still made a decent amount, like two, 300 bucks. So I'm going to be liking this one tomorrow. Definitely going to be watching that in the morning. I may even trade it pre-market depending on the reports that we get there. And then we'll, we'll go from there and see how the PCE and all of that is. But those are the main plays as far as everything else. Now, uh, like I said, I made a couple plays today, AMD. I flipped out of it. I only made $17 there. That was the idea that we gave from yesterday, uh, along the lines of being is sympathy to NVIDIA. So I liked it, but I held it throughout the day. And I said, I didn't want to hold it too long because I have all these other plays. They're kind of working back and forth. And one thing I said I wanted to do was not add too many plays. I did end up going with Square for the post earnings or the pre-earnings run up. Said I'd be willing to hold it. It actually kind of shot up here after hours. So going to be writing that out for tomorrow. Probably going to be dumping that off of the open. And then, well, again, we're going to be at the mercy of the PCE. But that was pretty much it. Every other play is still the same now. They've been fluctuating. A lot of people have been asking me what I've been holding. If you've been watching the watch list, nothing has changed. I think the only thing I'm left holding now is that uh, square that we just got here. The Dexcom from yesterday, but those ones, I mean, I'm looking to close those pretty much as soon as possible and then writing everything else out and then waiting until we see what happens. And if that theory comes true, we get that upside here next week. Hopefully, we could start to trim off of anything that was down that goes positive and then hold everything else as we get into non-farms and pal. And then it's going to be exciting, baby. But... That is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. I need you to remember, baby, there's two types of greed. Either you are a hoarder or you are a squanderer. So control the greed. Don't waste your opportunity. Don't waste what was given to you. And don't hang on and cling to things so tightly that you miss everything around you, baby. You got opportunities. We're ending the month, Chad. And I'm glad you made it this far, man. Let's go. Welcome to 2023. You know that? Welcome. Look at where we're at. Look at where we're at. We're at right where we're at with November. And just... Stop playing with me, baby. Horn. Horn. <laughs>